Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a gaming PC for $2,500. Now this is about as expensive and as high end as it gets while still being in the realm of sanity. So of course you can spend way more on a computer, but kind of beyond this point, you kind of hit the point of diminishing returns. So you want to spend another $500, oh it might be 5% faster. You want to spend another $1,000, oh it might be 10% faster. So you're not really going to be getting those kind of huge performance gains as you do going from something like the $1,000 build to this. For a CPU, we're going to be using an Intel Core i7-3770K processor. Now this is a killer CPU. It is a 4 core design but it does have hyper threading which means that Windows will see it as an 8 core CPU. Now the base clock speed is only 3.4 gigahertz or rather 3.5 gigahertz but this is very very overclockable thanks to that K series branding. So with the setup that we have in this build you should easily able to get well over 4 gigahertz probably closer to 4.5. Strictly for gaming this isn't that much better than the Core i5 however it does have some other advantages for example if you ever would like to do some video editing, virtual machines, 3D rendering, that kind of thing then the extra performance of the Core i7 will definitely come in handy, all for about $320. For a CPU cooler, we're going to be using a Corsair H100i. Now this is what I use in my own build and I've been very impressed with it so far. Pretty much my only slight complaint is that the fans can get a little loud, but thanks to the built-in Corsair Link software, you can go ahead and adjust the fan speed and the curve straight from the OS. So just open up the Corsair Link software and you're going to be good to go there. Now as far as the H100i goes itself, it is an all-in-one liquid cooler, so that means that everything you need is totally built in, you don't have to worry about filling it or doing anything else, pretty much just mount it onto your CPU, put the radiator into the top of the case and you're good to go. Speaking of that radiator, it is a dual 240mm radiator with a pair of 120mm fans. AKA all the geek talk aside, this is going to deliver a lot of really great cooling performance for only about $110. For the graphics cards, we're going to be using a pair of MSI GeForce GTX 680s. Now these are some of the best GPUs on the market period, so when you put two of them together at SLI, expect some really, really awesome performance. Now these aren't just any old GTX 680s, these are both the MSI Overclocked Edition with their twin frozer cooling, and on top of that they both do have 4GB of RAM built in. This is important as a normal GTX 680 only has 2GB of memory. Now when you're only playing on a single monitor this really doesn't come into play, however when you're playing some really insane resolutions with multiple monitors, that 4GB of dedicated memory makes a big difference in allowing you to play all the best games in all the greatest settings. Now this is going to be very pricey, so both of the GPUs together are going to run you over $1000. For a motherboard, we're going to be using an ASUS Sabertooth Z77. Now this is, bar none, one of the best motherboards that money can buy. So for starters, it has a very, very unique look with the ASUS Thermal Armor. So you take a look at it, it basically has a lot of, well, thermal armor all over the motherboard. Now this helps protect it as far as heat and all that kind of stuff, and it also really looks nice inside your case. It also has all the features you would expect. So of course you can overclock your Core i7 with this board, it supports up to 32GB of memory, you have full support for USB 3, SATA 3, as well as PCI 3, and more importantly than all of that, it has a very very good build quality and a 5 year warranty. So this board is built to last, all for about $240. For memory, we're going to be using 16GB of Samsung DDR3 RAM. Now I'm a huge fan of this stuff, I use it in all kinds of my builds, and that's because it works. So for starters, it's fairly cheap, which hey, even on an expensive build, it's always good to save a little bit of money. And on top of that, it delivers some absolutely stellar performance. So by default, it ships with a clock speed of 1600 MHz, which is fine, and you can leave it at that and you have no problem. But it is very easy to overclock the stuff to 1866 MHz or even higher. So all this for about $90 for 16GB is going to be a great deal. For an SSD, we're going to be using a 128GB Samsung 840 Pro Series drive. Now this is, in my opinion, the best 2.5 inch SSD out there. I use one in my own build, and I've used Samsung SSDs for a while, and never had any problems with them. So they not only did deliver some absolutely stellar performance, but they also give you good reliability, which is, you know, good combo. So of course with the 840 Pro, you also do have a couple of other options. So again, with this build, I chose to go with a 128 gigabyte version, as we have a normal hard drive for other, you know, files and all that kind of stuff. But if you want more storage, you can also bump this up to either 256 gigabytes or 512 gigabytes, and all the links will be in the description of this video. However, if you want to go ahead and stick with the 128 gigabyte version of this SSD, it's going to run you about $150. For our hard drive, we're going to be using a 2 terabyte Western Digital Caviar Black. Now, while I'm a huge fan of SSDs, they do have one problem, and that is they get very expensive when you try to get some higher capacities. So instead of trying to find a 2 terabyte SSD for us, instead we're going to be pairing a hard drive with a normal SSD to get the best of both worlds. So with the SSD, you put all your major things, for example, Windows, your major programs, your games, that kind of stuff, and for the rest of everything else, you go ahead and put it on the hard drive so you still have access to it, but it doesn't have to be, you know, taking up all that space on your SSD. So with two terabytes of storage, it's going to give you plenty of room, and on top of that, the Caviar Black is one of the fastest hard drives out there, all for about $180. For a power supply, we're going to be using a Corsair AX850. 
Now, when you're doing a major build like this with SLI graphics cards, overclocked CPU, hard drives, SSDs, all the kind of bells and whistles inside the rig, you definitely do not want to skimp on the power supply. So of course you need the standard kind of stuff like enough wattage obviously to power it all, but you also want to make sure that you get quality and that's what the Corsair AX series provides. So of course you get plenty of power to handle your graphics cards and all that kind of fun stuff, but it also is a modular power supply, so it helps kind of keep your cable management nice and neat, and it's all for about $140. For a case, we're going to be using the Corsair Obsidian 650D. Now a case is very important obviously, as this is what your build looks like, so if you get a green and purple case, well, your build's going to be green and purple, so there's a lot of things to keep in mind with a case, not only of course with performance and the size and all that kind of stuff, but also the aesthetics. Now I'm a big fan of the 650D as I think it looks very, very nice, clean. It does have a window so you can see all your cool components inside, and it also does have a pair of 200mm fans with an integrated fan controller, so you're going to get some really nice airflow through this case, all for about $150. For an optical drive, we're going to be using an LG Blu-ray burner. Now an optical drive is something that I consider optional in most of my builds, however with something this high end I think it does make sense to go ahead and include a Blu-ray drive so you can watch your movies, DVDs, CDs, all that kind of fun stuff. Now of course if you're not interested in this feel free to jettison it, it's jettison, yeah that's, that's the word, jettison, jettison the DVD drive, jettison the Blu-ray drive. I'm going to stick with that because it sounds cool. Anyway, if you're not interested in having this, you can by all means jettison it and go ahead and just use a DVD drive or in fact not even use an optical drive. That's what I'm doing in my rig right now. But if you do think that you're ever going to need to watch Blu-rays or install DVDs or whatever, this is a good option for about $75. For an operating system, you have the choice between Windows 7 and Windows 8. So I did make this decision for you guys, so I left this out of the build and I will put links to both of these in the description, so whichever one you want to go with, you can. So there are pros and cons with both. Windows 7 is tried, tested, true. It's a very excellent operating system. I used it for many years. However, Windows 8 is the newer version of that. So it brings some uh, questionable improvements. So the new interface is a little, uh, well, doesn't work too well on a desktop. But the good thing is, is you can pretty much entirely ignore it. So I use Windows 8 on my own system and basically I just ignore the Metro UI and use it kind of like a faster, more responsive Windows 7. Also, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, Microsoft is starting to phase Windows 7 out, so by the time you watch this video, it actually may not be available for sale. So, well, in that case, your kind of mind is made up. Regardless, though, if you do want to pick up a copy of Windows 7 or Windows 8, it will run you about $100. So there you guys have it, an awesome $2,500 gaming PC. Now, of course, prices are constantly fluctuating, so I'll put links to all the best prices in the description of this video. If you guys are interested in more, I have lots more computer builds at everything from under $400 all the way up to this. So no matter what your budget is, hopefully I do have a build that you might be interested in. So again, go ahead and check that out if you guys are interested. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Anyway guys, I will catch you next time.